Well, our next guest is a conservative commentator, and he's got a way of getting liberals all riled up with his on-target analysis. He's also got a lot to say about the U.S. election that's coming up and what could be the consequences of another four years of Barack Obama. But he's here in Toronto today to speak to a group about his views on radical Islam and what it could mean for the West. So thanks for coming in, Bill. Uh, Bill Whittle joining us today. What is it that you're hoping to get across in your talk tonight? Well, what we're really uh, hoping to talk about is uh, is what I'm trying to describe as threats to civilization, and we're going to talk a little bit about the external threats to civilization. I don't think that requires a whole lot of, you know, particularly insightful uh, views. There's there's needless to say, Israel surrounded by enemies, and we certainly have enemies of the West out there. But the thing that actually really concerns me is. Uh, the threats to the civilization that come from within. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the history of all civilizations, they all rise and fall in a pretty predictable pattern. And whenever a civilization reaches the heights of its powers, as the West is certainly at now, the, the final collapse always comes from within. It's never overrun from the outside. It's always a, a, a moral and a philosophical collapse. It's usually a, a, becomes a crisis of confidence. So I'm not trying to rile up anybody. I, I'm certainly, on the contrary, what I'm really trying to do is, is to see, have people understand the, the power of, of Western civilization and, the, and the, the wonder of it and the magnitude of it. What's your greatest concern? My greatest concern is that Western civilization has been so effectively demonized from within that we, you can make a pretty compelling case, and I mean to do it, that we are virtually losing the will to live, certainly the will to defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, is this due to political correctness? Uh, political correctness is one, of two, is one of two particular theories that have been used to really attack Western civilization at its root. Political correctness is a defensive theory. It's the shield against the counterattack. Mm -hmm. Political correctness basically says that certain types of speech are off limits, so we're not even going to have the argument. The entire essence of Western civilization and the power of the West is the free exchange of ideas, right. where people can disagree and, and enthusiastically disagree without demonizing the other person and try to come to some sort of idea of truth. Political correctness tries to take that entire half of the argument off the table. Right. The other side of the, the coin, that they, the theory that they use, is called critical theory and critical theory is the idea that we're going to take Western civilization and divide it up into tribes basically mm -hmm. of interest groups and we're going to have these interest, interest groups and, and special interest groups not attack each other but attack the tenets of Western civilization as we know it. I mean take an issue like Sharia law. Yeah. We've got politicians in this country who can't even mention it. They don't want to talk about it. It's the issue they just want to go away but they certainly will not speak out against it. I'll speak out against it. I'll speak out against it for, for for the reasons that we deserve to speak out against it. The entire idea of Western civilization is, again, the free exchange of ideas. Mm -hmm. the, the sacred ideas that we believe in that have given us all the success of this beautiful city of Toronto that we have here behind us is built upon the idea that people should be able to speak their minds and that the best ideas will win. Sharia law is designed to do exactly the opposite of this. If, if the freedom of speech is the primal essence that both liberals and conservatives can agree on in, in America and in Canada and, in, and throughout the West, this free exchange of ideas is entirely off limits in Sharia. Yeah. And I have no problem with people living under Sharia law. If, I'm, I'm all about individual choice and, and lack of coercion. If you want to live in Sharia law, there are many places in the world where right. you can live under Sharia law. Not so why are you trying to come here? And so what do you think, looking to your country now that's about to elect a president, what does America look like under four more years of President Barack Obama? It looks pretty hopeless to me. You know, when, when the the Democrats demonize Republicans as racist on the basis of nothing. I mean, the Republican Party was established to destroy racism. When Abraham Lincoln was elected in 1860, the mm -hmm. entire seven states of the deep confederacy were out of the union before he ever took office. It's not like he chased them out. They yeah. knew that Republicans meant the end of slavery. So when, when, the, when the Republicans are demonized as being racist, that's really a way of saying our ideas are so appalling and our track record is so appalling that we simply cannot even have a discussion of where the economy is. But right now in the United States, there is five trillion dollars of private capital sitting in private companies that is waiting to be spent and it's not spent and quite sensibly in my opinion because private businessmen don't know what the tax rate's going to be mm -hmm. we haven't passed yeah. the democrats haven't passed a budget in three years no. they don't know what regulations are going to come in and destroy their industry they don't know if the president's going to one day say well it's uh, greedy bankers or it's greedy poli it's this vegas you can't go to vegas we just don't know let me uh, ask you this then because prime minister stephen harper on friday announced that we're shutting the doors on embassies in iran and we're mm -hmm. pulling out diplomats 
diplomats, and we're sending Iranian uh, diplomats home away from there. We, we've declared that country a terrorist threat. And mm -hmm. the worst, Mr. Obama, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, have already said we're not getting involved in any conflict involving Israel, although they seem to have backtracked on that. Was this the right move for our prime minister? <laughs> My quick answer to that is, would you like to switch? <laughs> no. Uh, we'll, we'll trade him. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and we'll throw in a, a sizable cash offer, because I'm fairly convinced we could raise a fair amount of money to buy him from you from the conservatives in America. You have a conservative government, finally. All of the, all of the entitlement spending crises that now threaten to not only bring the United States economy down, but all of Europe and all the world mm -hmm. have been resolved in Canada by the kind of disciplined approach that we see with your prime minister and also that we see with governors like Scott Walker in Wisconsin, who's a conservative conservative governor in a liberal state went in and, and said the blue model is failing yep. and, 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 and turned it around. As far as Iran goes, we will know that we're serious and that we have confidence in our civilization when we wake up to the fact that the, that the government of Iran declared war on the United States of America in 1979, has been actively at war with the United States of America since 1979, and this is just another step in a long process. It's a long process, but I think something may be happening, and I guess we'll wait and see if it happens I, I think, before I think the, the Canadian government made the exact right decision. I want to thank you so much for coming in, and of so, course you're speaking here in Toronto, so let's give you that information. Uh, Mr. Whittle will be speaking tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern. If you're in the Toronto area and would like to go, there are some tickets still available. You can head on over to speakersaction.com for more info.